Welcome everybody, I'm Joshino and today I'm going to be breaking down patch 2.01 which is about to hit the public test server but won't be live until January but has sweeping changes for the game. I'm going to split this into two. The patch notes were 44 pages which actually is kind of just a scrollable page on the actual website but there's a hell of a lot of changes going on folks. So I think too much for just one video going through each little thing. If you are looking for a specific champion that you want to see whether it's been nerfed, buffed or changed then uh, there'll be a list in the description below of all the champions for each of the videos as I'll split them up. Uh, it's alphabetical so likely if you want Zin or Terminus or something like that they're going to be in the second video. As always, be sure to let me know all of your thoughts on the changes and the things coming in this patch in the comments section below. Enjoy the video, folks. So one thing that is coming with this next patch is a true in quotation marks season two for Paladins ranked. And this means that all the last ranked gameplay was season one. And players who played in season one will get the ranked loading frame based on the highest tier they received. So it's either bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, masters, or grandmasters. And paladins will now have six ranked splits throughout the year, rotating every two months when a new battle pass comes out. And players will have to qualify every split. However, the MMR the matchmaking rating is only having a soft reset, which means that you'll only lose a bit of your MMR or gain a bit of your MMR, basically be pulled towards the middle of the matchmaking rating uh, system. Alongside the loading frames, in Season 2 they're going to give a loading frame based on your highest placement order then at the end of Season 2, and if you play 100 games you get Battle Hardened, and play 200 games you get the Chieftain Grok A Limited skin coming out to the game. And with the first split, the 10 games, the first 10 games will give you a gold chest, and the 25 games played will give you Shield Bearer A Limited Avatar, just these little, little rewards for the splits rather than the big rewards for the Season 2 and the whole seasons, which is the year. Anyway, moving on to the big items on the docket and this is the whole balance and gameplay changes. I have talked about these in my videos but first of all is the card changes. So all instances of cauterized wrecker reveal and crowd control reduction in champion loadout cards is gone and replaced with something else and I'll be going over each of the cards and some of their impacts and thoughts on the cards as we go through this video. Also every champion has lost one talent. In short it's much easier to balance and hopefully the loadouts can be a bit more diverse to reflect a smaller pool of talent cards, I think it's a good thing. Just generally, four talent cards is hard to balance, but even when we had three talent cards, and to begin with, we never had like three usable talent cards. And finally, the big fourth thing is the item store has changed. So A, the category restrictions have been lifted, so you can get as many cards as you want from each of the categories. And they've also, this is a new thing that we didn't know anything about, reduced the prices. So in defense, resilience has gone from 300 at the start to 250, 500, and 750 at max, and Illuminate has gone down to 150, 300, and 450. Kind of feel a bit sorry for those invisible champions. The healing cards have also gone down, so Kill to Heal has gone from 300 to 200, 400, 600, and Life Rip the same with the same values. And the offense cards currently, Bulldozer has gone down to 150, 300, 450, and Death Hands has gone down to 250, 500, 750. Maybe Deft Hands won't be a meme build anymore, seeing as it doesn't cost ridiculous amounts of gold, although probably still be kind of meme -y. All in all, these are the lesser used cards, so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, and give some more options to flankers and damage dealers for healing, for example. Uh, gives the crowd control the ability to pick it up during the match now that they've taken them out of the loadout cards. Bulldozer and Deft Hands just needed that being reduced because they were just never picked up. Anyway, let's move on to the champions. The first champion with a change, and this isn't necessarily to do with the loadout cards, this is a champion that needed to change because they were so broken, and that is Androxus. So Defiance damage is reduced from 700 to 520. I mean, the, the card, the Defiant Fist legendary card, the talent card, still exists, so that is still a bit of a pain. However, Abyssal Touch scaling has been reduced to one second at each level, rather than pretty much giving you an instant reset if you get a punch. 
now it won't be able to give you that full reset. Also, one of the cards that is being changed is Spiteful, so the new effect is killing en enemies with Defiance, grants 3% auto its charge at each level up to 15%, which actually with the Defiant Fist loadout card could give you, you your ultimate relatively quickly. The damage, quite reduced here, but we'll see. Also, they've got rid of Dark Stalker, the talent card that gave the extra damage when enemies were low, and Curse Cylinder, the card that gives you the extra ammo in your magazine, is now the default talent card. All in all, it's nice to see a nerf to Androxus here, as Defiant Fist was rather crazy, and with the reset gone and with the damage reduced, hopefully won't be such a pain. Next up is Ash. So her Assert Dominance no longer applies the knockback, but stuns on hit for two seconds. This is her ultimate ability. And the reason for this is that her rally here, a legendary card, which gave her extra ultimate charged and also gave that two second stun has been removed and half of it has been put into that just default kit, the passive kit with that little bit of stun, which I think will actually make her, her ultimate that little bit better. Also two of the cards that are changing out are indomitable. The new effect gives 10 percent lifesteal at each level, up to 50% lifesteal. It could actually be interesting to try out an Ash lifesteal build with say the slug shot just because you are doing quite a lot of damage. Also further now increases your ammo count by one at each level. So again we could have some aggressive Ashes here with some lifesteal and some higher ammo count. And with Cauterize being taken out of builds maybe you won't actually be getting taken out with your lifesteal being so high. Next up is Barrack and I feel sorry for this gentleman. Hair Trigger is being removed. I actually enjoyed Hair Trigger on some of the smaller maps where there's tight corridors. So Jagger Falls is quite a small map, so you can actually get in people's faces and use the Hair Trigger. I personally take away Architectronics, the turret card, just because it's kind of brain dead. But hey ho. Also the card's been taken out, Brave and the Bold. It used to have CC effects, but now increases health by 150 at each level. Which is actually interesting because Barrett could actually have a real frontliner's health with this card, but there are a lot of cards that actually Barrack kind of wants to use with their turrets and with the bowling ball and other things. I think Barrack needs to be touched up at some point, just to nudge him a little bit, because he can play very well even in the moment. Next up is Bomb King. Demolition has been removed. This is a card that got rid of shields on the Grumpy Bomb. It was a bit redundant, nobody really picked it. Bomb King also has two cards being changed. Both of these affected crowd control. So the first one, Reinforced Casing, now increases your ammo count by one at each level, which is actually interesting because there's cards in Bo Bomb King's loadout to heal you whenever you explode a sticky bomb, and also when it, to give you reload speed whenever you explode a sticky bomb. So if you can put down lots more sticky bombs, I, I usually put them down passively at the start of a round to get the bonuses and things like that. So this could actually be quite good. Also uncontrolled, eliminations now reduce your active cooldowns by 10% at each level, up to 50%. And I think that's quite crazy as well. Bomb King can very easily get eliminations, especially with royal subjects in very tight maps like Jaguar Falls and stuff like that. Could be relatively strong here, folks. Although then again, you're not necessarily killing with your abilities, but could be quite a few grumpy bombs thrown out. And your poppy bomb, your escape, is very important when you're playing around the Bomb King. Books had some changes, so Booking Madness has been removed. This is a talent card that's gone out of there. That's the ultimate can go on forever one. Um, Bounce House has also had a change where it can knock enemies up straight instead of away at an angle. So actually could be easier to hit enemies once you've bounced into them, but I still don't think it will make that legendary card the best, but we'll just have to see on that one. Next up, Cassie has had a nerf just flatly to the health, being reduced from 2300 to 2200. Also, her Just Breathe has been removed. Also, Kinetics, this is a card that gave the Cauterize, the anti-healing, is instead now hitting enemy with Blast Shot Grants, one ammunition at each level. Plus there's a CC card, Tumble, which now increases your health by 50 at each level. So the nerf isn't necessarily a nerf if you pick up these cards, and in fact you can have more health as a Cassie. But I think the, one of the biggest things here is the k kinetics being removed, because even if you're playing a disengaged Cassie, you're playing a dodge roll Cassie, you still probably want the kinetics at the max level so you had that inbuilt cauterize, so this is actually quite a big nerf to Cassie. And I still think she'll still be good in the realm, but perhaps not the top dog, or one of the top dogs at least. Dredge has had some interesting changes, a little bit head scratching. His ability shortcut now allows allies to pass through it, it's gone into the default. So Freebooter has been removed, that was the card where allies could go through it. So that's just a straight up buff. Also Spyglass has been changed, 
and now is Crow's Nest. This is the one that revealed enemies, which was annoying. It was actually quite strong on the dredge. Um, but now the broadside knocks you up for 600 base and then 200 each level. It's almost like a poppy bomb jump on the dredge with your broadside, which you can pretty much spam. This is pretty crazy, actually, and will be very fun to play around with, and we'll just have to see how that one plays out. Drogus has also had a change with his health reduced from 2400 to 2200. However, he can get 50 health at each level with Apex Predator, one of the cards. Also, his talent card, Reign of Terror, has been removed. This is the one with the salvo. Also, Worm Jets has been changed. So now it empowers your booster flight. So it keeps you in, it, it basically allows you to almost keep in the air indefinitely. You you actually play almost like a pharaoh in Overwatch uh, here where you can be in the air for a very, very long time. The devs themselves also admitted that there's a problem with this because if you're in the air, you're much easier to hit from by snipers and hit scan champions. And I think for the most part, it'll work in games where people are acting a bit more obliviously, where the Drogus might sort of flank around in the air without people looking up, but I feel that it's going to be hard for the Drogus to play like, say, a Pharaoh in Overwatch does, because there's a lot of roofs in Overwatch and sort of very vertical cover, whereas only really on Serpent Beach and a few of the maps, there's this sort of very vertical cover. There's not really that many things to jump across. There are some walls, I mean, there's walls in Drogo, Drogo Falls you could use to drop your, your rockets off of and things like that, but. We'll just have to see how it is, and I think it'll be fun to play with, but I don't know whether it'll be actually useful. So on the cards, I talked about Apex Predator. Decimate increases the salvo explosion radius by 8% at each level, so that's actually quite interesting because it can go back maybe even bigger than the default size of the salvo explosion. Follow the scent uh, now increases the size of your fire spit by 20% at each level, so it can be up to 100% larger than it was before. I think it's crazy because it'll be pretty easy to hit those off, and to have some of the, and probably is going to be useful for the builds with the legendary card. Eevee has had some changes. Reprieve has been removed. And Over the Moon is now the default talent. I kind of wish I'd just change it to the uh, blinking talent. Um, and Snow Globe is now unlocked at Champion Mastery level 2. I do think the Snow Globe legendary is a bit random as well. So the card change here is a Frigid Field. New, abil new abilities to heal for 50 every second during Ice Block. Could be interesting actually seeing as you'd be out of effects and things whilst you're in the Ice Block. Just see how that one pans out. Fernando has had some changes. So Dragonfire Lance, which was pretty pants, has gone. Scorch no longer deals increased damage at base. However, each sub subsequent target hit damage increase from 30 to 45%. So I think actually at the end of it probably works out higher than the original if you actually get all of the shots off so the last person will get hit for a lot if you go through three people. And there's quite a few cards changed here too. So Hot Pursuit, uh, the new effect is Fireball Projectile Speed Increase by 15% at each level, which could actually be rather interesting for your Scorch Fireballs to go through people. But I don't know whether it's a bit of an unnecessary nerf to the Fernando mobility and the Flag Nando, which is the funnel way to play the Fernando. Incinerate uh, now reduces the cooldown of Fireball by 0.6 seconds at each level, so you could get it very, very low. Also, Brand hitting enemies with Fireball heals you for 100 health at each level, plus immovable object while well below 50% health reduce 5% increased healing from other players. The big one here is the cauterize going, which actually did make Fernando rather good with, with their fireballs on a very low cooldown. We'll just have to see how they pan out here. Don't know whether they'll dip out of the meta a little bit. Furious Celerity has been removed. This is a talent card that gave you the extra Wings of Wrath charge. It was kind of random just because the charge also had a cooldown, so it's actually quite hard to actually use it, so I'm not necessarily going to miss that. There's a new effect on Hallowed Sight, a card. So now hitting Pyre Strike causes you to not consume ammo, for one second at each level, so up to five seconds you don't actually consume any ammo, so you can just keep firing forever. This is actually rather interesting if you've got a fast pyre strike into a sort the shotgun build, the damage build, uh, with the weapon, and whoa, you could actually get quite a bit off there. There's also some buffs to the card, so fire siphon's heal has been increased by 25 heal at each level, so 75 base to 75 extra each level of the card. A uh, Pyre Walker cooldown reduce increased from 0.5 to 0.6 every level. And also Stoke the Fire cooldown reduction increased from 0.5 to 0.6 seconds at every level. Fury is doing a little bit better this last patch and I think definitely with all of these cooldowns will also be slightly even more better. 
this patch. Grok has had some changes, so talent remove was Wraith, this was the silly one where you went into the ghost walk when you're almost about to die. But yeah, I'm not going to miss this one. There were so many memes builds with it, but it was just annoying in all honesty. Grok's also had a buff to their Spirit's Domain talent card, so the healing done to allies is increased by 20%. This is the card that makes your Lightning Staff heal allies, which I think is actually crazy. Grok could actually be a main healer with this card, with his uh, Lightning Staff. So Titanic Ward has actually seen a bit of a nerf, so increased healing is reduced from the totem from 40% to 30% extra, and is now the default talent card. Titanic Ward was okay, but I don't know whether this needed a nerf, really? but hey ho. Grover has also seen a buff. His passive Blossom range is increased by 50%. This is very welcome. Uh, Blossom's awesome. This is actually half of the card Efflorescence, which is now removed. And now there isn't a extra that extra healing on the Blossom. However, I think it's nice, a nice little touch. And obviously if you take the main heal talent card with this, just in, amplifies your healing potential really. Force of Nature has also been changed, this was a CC reduction card. So now dropping below 50% health grants 150 shield each level for 3 seconds. This is actually rather interesting as it gives the Grover some survivability and may actually work out here. It might give that little nudge to the Grover to survive a little bit longer because he's quite vulnerable if he gets picked out by a flanker or something like that. Inara has had the Wrath of the Stagala card removed. This is one where each of your shots, if you hit all three, would do extra damage. I'm not going to miss that one too much, but there we go. Also the card, Insurmountable. This was a crowd control reduction card. Now increases your ammo count by one at each level, offering a offensive option, I guess. Genos has had some buffs here. So Celestial Touch has been removed and has been partly put into the kit. So Astral Mark now heals for an additional 5% of allies max health rather than the Celestial Touch's 10%. So giving half the effect just to Genos at base, which I think could nudge Genos to be one of the main healers once again. We haven't seen him in the meta for a while, although he could work with a single tank and a few damages. Some of his cards have also been changed with the effects going out. So Side Reel gain 50 health at each level. Could make him a tanker, I guess. And Eclipse every second channeling, Void Grip heals you for 50 at each level. Not sure about that one, but some of the meme builds with the Void Grip could enjoy this, I guess. Khan has also got some reworks. So Overpower, his ultimate, is now a skill shot and must be aimed like a projectile. And missing it does provide you 30% ultimate charge back to the Khan. So it's a bit like the Drugger's ultimate. If you miss it, then you still get some ult charge back. Also, the actual damage once you hit has gone from 600 to 900. So the initial damage onto an enemy. So it's harder to hit, but it'll hit for more. So it'll be easier to burst down enemies after you've hit them. However, the most interesting thing about the Khan, and perhaps why he will maybe drop out of the meta a little bit, is that firing line is going. This is the one that gave the crowd control immunity to your allies and also increase their damage. There are some good other good cards for the Khan and Khan's abilities are good but I think firing line was which was, was what was keeping him sort of as a top dog as he was so useful to his allies. Storm of bullets can be effective uh, being aggressive. Vortex grip too with the stuns. The Anna shield is so-so but with the record cards going out this patch may also be interesting as a very sh shieldy tanky Khan that won't be able to be taken out until later game with the record buys so maybe he will stay in the meta everything is about to shift so we'll just have to wait and see next up Knesset's talent suppression has been removed this was a card that made oppressor mines affect two more targets and the sniper shots with and the sniper shots on and sniper shots on enemies targeted by these mines would deal 30% more damage. Was a bit random. Uh, the other cards are probably more fun. Eagle Eye, I don't know so much about, to be honest. That's quite an annoying card. But they've also changed some of the cards too. So Octopressor, Octopressor Mines affect up to one at each level more enemies. So could it affect the whole team? I'm just kidding, folks. Uh, this actually is a useless card because you could only affect up to four more champions in the realm. If you affect five more champions, that's one more champion than it is on the enemy team. You're already hitting one, so you only need four. So there's an extra point there that is completely useless. They made the same problem a few patches ago where they tried to make this card the same. So yeah, high res, come on. Open season 
Fully charged weapon hits now refund one ammo at each level. So that's quite interesting to be honest. That could uh, mean that you don't actually have to reload on the Knessa. That could be rather insane, especially with the talent card where subsequent fully, fully charged shots do extra damage. Also lion weight that wasn't really used, um, used to heal you. After two seconds of standing still, you gener regenerate one ammo every two seconds. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You don't really play Knessa as like a hardcore sniper. With snipers in Paladins, you still have to move around a lot, so I don't know whether standing still helps really, because you can get outpoked by a lot of champions um, if you do that. So that is pretty much halfway in the video, 20 minutes in. Yeah, the full thing was like about 40 minutes. If you want to see that next video, it'll be up very shortly, or likely live if it's a few hours after this video has gone up. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more of my content, and I'll see you all next time for the next video very shortly. Thanks for watching, everybody. Joshino.